All right, you guys, uh, I will turn the doorbell off because I know Ray hates that. <laughs> All right, so um, welcome to our Thursday morning virtual coffee, everyone. Um, for those of you who um, I haven't ever met before, my name is Debbie Morrow. We started doing these virtual coffees two and a half, three years ago, something like that. Um, and uh, <laughs> When we first started them, we we had three or four people on some of them, but um, but we've grown to now having at least fifty. Um, sometimes we push the envelope and we're at a hundred on the call, so that's super cool. Um, we are all about building relationships here. We're going to do a little bit of education and a little bit of networking in our breakout rooms, and. Um, and Ray, my business partner, Ray, introduce yourself. Hey guys, my name is Ray Scholseth. I am based in Chicago. I have five kids, so summer schedule is insane. So I'm in the car at the moment. I've um, been in real estate for 32 plus years. Uh, Debbie's my partner in Agent Impact Group and all things Facebook, email, newsletter related as we try to contribute to all the real estate professionals here. Excellent. And Ray, it looks like you're not driving, right? You're I sitting not. still. I'm literally sitting on my laptop in my car. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to make sure that that I wasn't um, disturbing you and that that you were being safe. Um, so, excellent. <clears throat> so, um, Ray, this week's newsletter was all about getting unstuck, right? Yeah, guys, let me ask everybody here a question. We have almost 50 people here. Let me know in the chat. Have you ever felt stuck or do you feel stuck in your business? Let me know in the chat. Let's see where everybody's at. Be honest, guys. This is a safe space. Feel stuck now. Many times. Been there. I love it. One of the questions I always ask myself or I ask other people that I feel are mentors or peers or maybe have been through something that I haven't is what do you do when you don't know what to do? Right? So I want to ask you next. If you've been stuck or you feel stuck, what do you think may be your next move? Let me know in the chat. What do you think might be your next move? W. Pick something and just do it. I love it. Tactical pause, reassess, take action. Sounds like a Navy SEAL to me, Walt. Take a step back <laughs> watching this. I love it. Try a different direction. All right, so I'm going to give you guys what I've learned over the last five years after having massive loss after COVID. It starts with making a decision. Being aware that you feel stuck, being aware that you are somewhere you don't want to be, being aware that you want change, and then making an actual decision that this needs to change is the first step. So show of hands, who has ever changed their mindset? Who has ever made a decision? and change their mindset. Awesome. Love all the hands going up. Okay. Somebody unmute. How did you feel? Preston, I see your hand up. Lydia, I see your hand up. All right. I want to know when you changed your mindset, how did that feel? Loaded question. I'm not going to throw out things that I think. I want to know how you feel. Who wants to share? I Peggy, felt empowered. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's amazing. Janisha, go, please. Yes, I felt empowered. I felt like I was um, I was at a breakthrough point, you know, when everything changed for me. It was, I'm still new. So I just joined real estate um, in February. It was knowing that I was ready for a breakthrough and I, it was something different for me to have power, um, power over my story, you know, rather than following in the footsteps of anyone else. I joined real estate, a real estate brokerage, um, kind of going against the grain. My aunt is a top Remax broker and I loved watching her grow, but to go a different way than she went was what I felt like would have been best for me. So just continuing to, you know, have that same mindset that I started with is where I really am trying to improve at. So Janisha, let me ask you a loaded question. 
Mm -hmm. How did you give yourself permission to do that? How did I give myself permission? I just took, I just went with it. I just went forward. It was it. not so much of a permission that I gave myself. It was me wanting to stand on my own two feet rather than um, leveraging anyone else into what I wanted to see grow for me. I love it. Well, well done. I'm going to give you Thanks. a round of applause for making that decision to move forward. That's a big deal. I love it. Peggy, what about you? Well, we're at the point of pivoting again and not really quite sure which way to go or what to do about it. So uh, I write to the universe. I was just going over my pages, <laughs> writing to the universe. And, you know, you're sitting here uh, at the computer and an email comes in or a phone call comes in and you're like, oh, my God, there's the answer. So just be that open mind is huge. You, and, you, and you never know what's going to come no matter how you ask for what you want, it can appear in a different way. So having an open mind going, oh, thank you very much for this. We'll take more. So the phone calls come. We're we're in the middle of pivoting at the this point. We're expanding the business. We're hiring. So finding the right people takes a lot of time. Amen to that. Our, our, our company is different than other companies. So people have a little challenge around understanding exactly what we do and how it benefits the uh, economies of the United States, for instance, right? The better and more income people have, the better they can give back to the community and make a difference. So how can we empower people to do that? Yeah, but I love really it. Good. Thank you. Thanks for sharing, Peggy. William Steiner, you've had to pivot a lot, man. You knew I was going to call you out. Hold on, I'm going to ask to unmute. No, 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 it's okay. I wanted to unmute myself. I it's sort of like I 100% mirror what Peggy just said. It's the truth. I would mirror her. So I don't know if I can add to what she said because she exemplifies everything that I think about and it's in very mutual in our mindset. But Look, you can stay where you want to, where you are today and sit there as long as you want, but the world is moving at a fairly <laughs> certain level of speed and you've got to get up and you've got to go with it. Uh, there was some sort of quote like um, the giraffe or the, or the gazelle has to run, and the lion has to run. At the end of the day, you've got to get up in the morning and you've got to make your contribution. And the universe will give you what it knows you're ready for. And if you're not, it's challenging you. And you just got to step up a little stronger. I hope that would echo uh, as Peggy has said. The floor yeah. recognizes uh, Raymond. Thank you. I love it. Thanks, man. So guys, I think one of the things that I have found very useful is once you embrace the mindset and you give your permission that something needs to change, you got to shake up your routine. You have to do something different. So who here in the last 30, 60, or 90 days has chosen to do something different instead of feeling the struggle of their business? Anybody here doing something different that wants to share? Janisha, talk to us. So outside of doing <clears throat> multiple extra open houses, um, I've literally just been putting myself out there um i'm doing more community events i've been uh, visiting with my my teachers um uh, my child's teachers um their <laughs> parent teach conferences things that i just wasn't always so big <laughs> you know my my influence wasn't so much there i've been really branching out trying to network not just for my business but for a personal gain myself like knowing these people gaining these relationships it's a relationship business so i'm sorry i'm trying to so <clears throat> i've been doing a lot of networking um recently um women empowering women events and um just multiple different facets there's a lot of knobs turning right now um i work for a really good um medical school as well so you know just making sure that 
my knowledge is, you know, I'm able to show it on any, at any point in time. Um, and constantly learning, constantly learning is what I've been really focused on. Learning and being able to expose what I've learned. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's amazing what happens when you just say hi, right? And you actually let those relationships flourish and you take a risk. Uh, Barbara and Bridget, I see your hands up. Barbara, you want to go first? Good morning. Um, yeah, so I um, I had been really busy for a bit. Very grateful for that. Uh, but I just needed to um, kind of everything settled, everything closed. And I needed to just take a break uh, just to, um, not totally, I mean, I'm still doing the social media and reaching out and all of that, but um, just needed to regroup on everything and all of the things that I'm certified in and that I have learned, I've never dove into them to really wrap my head around every one of those things to see how it can benefit me. So um, that's what I've been working on. And um, I feel more confident and educated with these different areas. And um, I've been doing um, first time home buyer seminars uh, with a lender. And um, that's always rewarding because um, when you see the little lights go on and the interest and um, uh, it's just really helpful to move forward knowing that you really are, you know, getting out there and helping people out. So I love it, Barbara. Thank you for sharing. And yeah. thank you for allowing yourself to expand. And like, that's a big deal. Thank you. Bridget, you're up. And I think you're driving. So be careful, please. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Those are great ideas, Barbara. Um, kind of similar to what she was saying, you know, I started working um, in a niche years ago, focusing on working with attorneys and in the last 12 months, that piece of my business has exploded, which is great, except for what I'm also realizing is my traditional business is down. And so for me, it's kind of like, I feel like I have two separate businesses, right? This niche that I run very differently than my traditional business. And so it's a constant balancing act of which to which to do for which lead generation, right? And so for me, it's been in the last 30 days being more intentional um, to reach out to my sphere uh, for referrals. And then also, if I can be vulnerable for a moment, um, the other thing that I realized is there, you know, there's a lot of changes happening in our industry. And I think I've been pretty lucky in that a lot of times I'm only going up against either just myself or maybe one other person. And I think that lately the referrals I've been getting, they're interviewing a lot more people. So it's forced me to sort of say, I got to make sure I step up my game. And um, so I am completely revamping my buyer experience and my seller experience here in San Diego. Um, and I started by working with a professional videographer. You don't have to do that. You could just do it for free by yourself, but just creating a whole series of like what's next, um, trying to take myself more out of the transaction. And so I have like seven, what's next, here's what's next videos for sellers, seven, here's what's next videos for buyers. And so it puts me in front of them more often without actually me having to be in front of them because um, I'm trying to work on leveraging my time as well. I love it. That's fantastic. And Bridget, I think what you said is important, right? You put all your energy over here. So this exploded, but then these over, these things over here fell off. And there's always that balance and that truth of where energy goes, energy flows, right? Yahila, I see your hand up. Good morning, everyone. I'm um, just taking my walk. I'm here in New York. Um, I, I still call myself a fairly new agent. Um, I've been licensed for a year. And what I've been doing um, differently is definitely working on my social media um, presence and pushing myself to do more um, videos, um, just talking about the, the home buying process, just anything with home ownership, um, just making more videos and um, and just uploading 
those um, <laughs> first time home buyer information. And um, yeah, so that's that's what I've been doing. I do have a certification as a um, short sale and for foreclosure um, specialist. So I'm part of a investors group and they, they meet, um, we meet every two weeks um, virtually. And I mentioned that. So they were like, you know, this is something that you can promote more and, and let people know that you do. So um, like the young, other young lady said, I have to work my certifications as well and not just put it to the side and just looking for a sale or um, someone that's selling their home or someone that's buying a home, but also to push myself to um, work with those that can use assistance in a short sale or foreclosure situation. And I feel that would definitely open up my knowledge more, um, in my interaction. So, um, so yeah, that's what, um, that's my, that's my part. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I think that, um, yeah, leveraging your certifications and where you've taken the time to invest in yourself. If you really start to develop those and work out and build your niche in that sense, it will pay off. It's just a matter of time. Chris. Thank you. Sure. Chris Dowell, you're up, man. You know, I uh one of the things I'm doing right now is I I I'm, I micromanage everything on my team. And um Not I've great. kind of gone back and let, you know, kind of let my team do what they you know, what they're good at, you know, social media and uh contracts and and negotiations like that. And things have kind of really flourished for me. Um, you know, I, I you know, a good week was, you know, eight to ten offers. Now we're doing 15 to 20. So we're we're cranking a lot more and uh got my team teams more happy right now and stuff. So we're I'm definitely delegating a lot more in the last month. Chris, let me ask you a question. Does this make you a believer in less is more? Um, yeah. Yeah. Do we lose yeah, I, I stick to what I do best and let everybody do what they do best. I, you know, for me, micromanaging, I, you know, I, I'm telling everybody what to post, what to do here, what to do that. I'm not doing that now. I'm giving ideas, but that's it. And stuff and things of, you know, they're more in tune of what's working, what's not working and things like that, where I thought what was working, it's not. They're looking at all the stats and everything for me and and getting back to me. Hey, this is what's working. This is what's not working and so forth and like that. And and then they're out there researching a lot more too, where I couldn't research that much. What, what's working, what's not working with other agents and stuff. I love it. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you and congrats. Diana, you're up. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be back. Hey. Um. I really appreciate what Bridget said about taking what you're doing to the next level. And one of the things that I done that I did recently is um, with our home buyer seminar, we actually took that way to the next level. We um, did a home buyer seminar on wills. And so what that was is it was a lot of different moving parts to where we incorporated um, everyone meeting at our office, but we didn't have the seminar in our office. We actually let the home buyers um, or potential home buyers tour homes because that's what buyers want to do really they want to look at homes and so at each home that they were able to tour we had a little bit of information on the home buying process what to do to get pre-approved home buyer um, down payment assistance programs we had credit repair specialists we had lenders there and so um, as they were touring each home they were able to find out a little bit of information and then um, we met back at our office after they, they did the tour. And then we had um, all the different vendors that had to do with the home buying process. So we had the title company there, we had the home inspectors there, the, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that we that we had, um, just a lot of different vendors that so was outside. It wasn't in, in the classroom setting and they were able to go and talk to and, and meet everyone that's gonna be part of that process. So. They not only are learning about it, but then they're feeling comfortable and they're meeting up front everyone that's going to be involved in the process. And then we had um, lunch catered for them. So I, I still have people calling me 
um, asking when I'm going to do the next one because they weren't able to come. I have um, past clients that are telling me, you know, I have people that um, that I want you to meet or want to talk to you about buying, and even people that um, that didn't want to wait for the home buyer seminar that already we got that process started for them. So that was a great experience. Besides just having the normal home buyer buyer seminar, um, just basically taking it to the next level. I love it. That's amazing. Congrats on the good work and thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Peter, you're up, bud. Hey guys, how are you? Been, been a couple of weeks. I've missed the last two. Uh, been, been pretty busy um, on that uh, emotional roller coaster that I've been on. Um, so I, I had the choice made for me. Um, I worked with a company for eight years and they eliminated my position. And now I am 100% in the real estate thing going on. Um, no choice in the matter. So the whole part about, oh my God, I got to change something because I can't stay where I'm at right now because this is not going to work. Uh, as it turns out, I got two closings this month. I got nothing for next month. And then the phone rang. I've been invited to speak at a seminar for uh, for, a loan, for a mortgage broker company who's going to be offering DPAs, first-time homeowners assistance and things like that. And they had asked me to come and speak with them tomorrow. So I'm like, oh my God, where's this going? So there's the up. Now we're going back up, right? So the emotional roller coasters go back up. But um, someone had asked me yesterday uh, at a little barbecue that we had that a lot of brokers were there. He goes, what's your website? I mean, you're doing a lot of stuff. You know, you, you're a drone pilot. You're flying around, taking pictures, making money. And I says, I got to do the hustle because I got to I gotta make some money here. And... Um, What's your website? And, I, and it dawned on me. It says, you know what? I've never, ever updated my website. And none of this information that I've been doing is on there. So that's an epiphany I've just ha I've had. And um, I got I to gotta update that. I got to change it. That's another avenue that I haven't searched. So, and um, I like the certification. You guys are talking about certifications and things like that. I think I need to know more about that too. Uh, as as a, I put my resume out there so to speak. Thank you. Very cool, Peter. Thank you. Ping us if you need some resources. We're happy to share. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Jose, you're up, man. I have two. Number one, let me speak on the certification. Um, for anybody who has an ABR certification, we have a Facebook group that you can join, and we've been passing referrals quite a bit. So that's helped out a lot. The other thing is, that NAR.Realtor is offering a free certification for ABR for free. So you might want to look into that. Number two, on the uh, uh, different seminars uh, for people, this may help out. I partnered up with Bank of America, which they have to vet you and approve you. And then they will tell everybody who comes to their um, front desk or whatever that, uh, and they advertise it for you. And we did that as well. And that's helped out a lot too. Just wanted to share both of those ideas. Cool. Thanks, Jose. If you have a link to the, um, the B of A thing, we'd love to see that if you don't mind sharing. A, B, R. It's on Facebook. Dot com. Oh, okay. Yeah, ABR uh, on Facebook. It's called uh, networking and referrals. Hmm. Debbie and I will check that out. Yeah. Okay, Peggy, you're up. The what I got out of all the shares is we always have to be looking at making changes accepting new things that come, opening our mind, like what Chris was talking about. I'm reading a book by Richard Branson and he, his 50,000 employees all get to make decisions because he can't make the decisions for all of them. And they all think differently. And because they have the freedom to think and act, that's what one of the things that makes all of his businesses so successful. So we're always pivoting. I think this is a really great group for real estate agents to really listen to what other people are doing so that they're constantly open 
trying new ideas and putting new things in place. And the people that Debbie have come on here who have all these great ideas, particularly Ray. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I'm not even in your business and I really get so much out of the meetings here. We've got to always be, always, we always need to keep our minds open. We always need to be trying new things. It's so super important. And all the people that are on here have incredible talents. And if we could use each other's talents by putting things in our own businesses, well, I thank you all. And just for a little feedback, if this is okay, Jose, I don't know what an ABR is. And I know that sometimes I see real estate licenses that I mean, real estate cards that have lots and lots of letters behind them. And the public doesn't know what those mean. If you get to put a letter behind your name, it's really good to spell out what that letter means so people understand what your education is and how you could support them. Just as a clue, I have a few clue, a uh, few letters behind my name, but I never put them in because it's all about building the relationship as far as I'm concerned. So thank you everyone for all everything that you've ever done here and all the things you're doing in your communities and the way you're making a difference and keep coming back. Ray. I love it. Thank you, Peggy. Ray. Yeah, Jose. If I may answer her, my contact information is in the chat and I do have ABR, what it stands for, accredited buyer's representative. And it's in my uh, contact information. If anybody needs help, feel free to reach out. Cool, thank you. Uh, I think we're gonna get ready to go into breakout rooms, guys, but I wanted to add to what Peggy said. There's another book by Dr. Benjamin Hardy called Personality Isn't Permanent. And it is about making the conscious decision to change who you are or who you want to be, starting with the decision to do so. So that is a fantastic book. Yeah, Donna, so good. Uh, absolutely amazing. All of his books are amazing. But that book was the game changer for me and when COVID hit in 2020. Um, Debbie, I'm going to pass the mic back to you. What, yeah. where... <clears throat> Excuse me, Ray, before you do, can you give us... The first breakout room question. Yeah, so going back to kind of how we started this, I'm going to invite all of you to shake up your routine, whether you're in a good place, <laughs> in an evolving place, in a changing place. There's something called the three-day switch, right? So you take three days, whatever you want, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and just pick one thing to change in your routine that is out of your comfort zone. And just do that for three days and then see how you feel. So I would say my question is, what is one thing you can change today to shake up your routine? Take a different way home, try a different coffee, go someplace new for dinner, stop work earlier, work at a different hour. What is one thing that you can do? Excellent. <clears throat> All right. We're going to open these breakout rooms. And um, Walt, I'm going to give you the heads up. <clears throat> that you get the next icebreaker question. So here we go. We're opening these rooms. Jeanette, see, it looks like you're assigned a breakout room. Um, can you get in there? I don't know, Jeanette, can you hear me? 